You have, uh, Cisco has a next gen um, CCAP device due to come out soon, the CVR8. Yes. How, is, how is that, or how is CCAP going to play with DOCSIS 3.1? Uh, so the CCAP is a very important platform for us. It's our third generation uh, machine. It is, it's coming out this year. It is a full spectrum machine. It supports uh, the CCAP vision of DOCSIS and video and uh, out of band. So full services in one box. Um, right in the middle of the design of the box is when 3.1 hit. And so we didn't have an idea of exactly what 3.1 would look like, but we had an idea that was going to be impactful. So we had the ability to design the box to support 3.1 from day one. And the way we chose to do that is uh, we have a line card that fits in our box. It's a highly programmable line card. All the Mac is done, FPGAs, mm -hmm. all the, it's basically FPGAs and CPUs. So it's all software driven line card. And then we put the five chips on plug-in modules. So those, the upstream and downstream um, five chips are on plug-in modules, which are actually field replaceable. So you could take that board, we'll ship it as a 3.0 machine, you could take those five chips off in the field and put 3.1 five chips on in a module, and it's upgraded to 3.1. Huh? And matter of fact, if there's something wrong with the first version of 3.1 chips, which is not uncommon for new technologies, it's very easy to field upgrade until things really stabilize. So it lowers the risk for early deployment as well. Okay. So that's your integrated CCAP solution. Yep. You're also working on a distributed CCAP solution. We yeah. are, yeah. and that's so. another uh, very interesting path that DOCSIS is going down. So with the distributed architecture, we're doing something called Remote Phi, mm -hmm. where we take that Phi chip that's on that module and just go ahead and put it into a separate box. Um, and then we take the interface between the Mac and the Phi chip, which we've defined for now 10 years or so in DOCSIS. It's in the 2.0 spec as DIMPY, it's in Modular CMTS, and we're now putting that into something we call Remote Phi. So that interface will allow us to connect to a separate box. And that's all, that's really, all about tracking the movement in the HFC network. So one of the things that we think might happen in the HFC network is the fiber investment. It might be more interesting to invest in digital fiber than analog fiber. Mm -hmm. So we have customers who are on the cusp of their next big investment in HFC. It's like, let's go deep fiber, let's invest a lot of money. And if we're going to invest a lot of money, what's the best investment? And I think there's a viable argument that if you invested in 10 gig E in a fiber plant, that could be reasonable for other things, such as merging residential and commercial services into the same footprint. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't it be interesting, right now the operators have two plants. They have a residential analog fiber plant and a commercial digital fiber plant. What if that was one big digital plant and you could offer residential services or commercial services anywhere on that plant, or maybe even pond services anywhere off of that same plant? Right. I think the, uh, the value of a common IP network has rung true a lot in the internet and could very well ring true in the HSC plant. The only challenge of that vision is you can't put qualms over 10 gig E unless you do something like Remote Phi. Mm -hmm. So what Remote Phi does is it keeps DOCSIS relevant in this new emerging world of digital fiber. Why do you like Remote Phi better than, say, Remote Mac or, or the other distributed access architecture options that you could pursue? There's uh, kind of two different ways of solving it. The Phi chip has to go out there because it connects to the coax. So then there's everything else but the, the Phi, which is really the Mac, the scheduler, the software, and stuff like that. We centralize that. So really our solution is centralized software. It's just that remote Phi sounds, is a lot more marketable name. Going out and say, hey, <laughs> buy our centralized software, it doesn't sound as cool, but remote Phi is cooler. Right. But it's all about preserving, for us, the centralized software model, because in our architecture with remote Phi, that software and the centralized, uh, the centralized software is the same software that's in the integrated CMTS. Mm -hmm. And if you consider the distributed market is going to start at zero with some ramp up in market penetration, to have that leverage the existing integrated CMTS market, or integrated CCAP market, is the strongest play that you can have. Mm -hmm. So it's 100% software leverage off of the integrated CMTS market. Plus it's the same interfaces, the same Phi chips. It's really all the same building blocks that go into integrated CMTS, right. just kind of moved around. The other thing that we think is really important with our architectural approach is by only moving the Phi chip out there, we believe it, it leads to the simplest node implementation. Uh -huh. And we believe very strongly that uh, you, the, the operator should be able to buy a node from one vendor and a CMTS from the other vendor. Even though we make both elements, we don't think the buying decisions should be tied together. 